Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Best Time to Buy and Sell Stock 2. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. You were given an integer array prices where prices of i is the price of a given stock on the ith day. On each day, you may decide to buy and or sell the stock. You can only hold at most one share of the stock at any time. However, you can buy it and then immediately sell it on the same day. Find and return the maximum profit you can achieve. So example one, we have the following prices of this stock. So we have seven, one, five, three, six, and four. We're going to buy it on day two at price one, sell on day three, price five. So that's a profit of five minus one, which is four. And buy again at three to sell again at six. So four plus three, we get a total of seven. Example two, we have one, two, three, four, five. We buy one and we sell on day five at price five so that's a total profit of four and example three we have all decreasing numbers so we can't actually make a profit so our profit would be zero okay so we want to figure out what the maximum amount of profit we can make is given an integer array filled with prices okay so we're going to take a look at example two again so we have our input array of one two three four five and what we did here was we bought on day one and we sold at day five for a maximum profit of four but what if we buy at day one and then we decide to sell at day two so right now our current profit would be one two minus one right and once we sell since we can buy and sell on the same day, what if after selling this, we decide to buy it again at day two? So after selling this, we decide to buy it again at day two, and then we sell at day three. So again, we would have three minus two, another profit of one, so our total profit now becomes two. And then after selling on day three, if we buy it again at three to sell at four, after selling at four, buy it again to then sell at five, we're making profit increments of one every single time. So between one and two, two and three, three and four, and four and five, we come out to have a total profit of four. Now, this is the same as buying on day one and selling on day five. There are multiple ways to go about this buying and selling to get the same maximum profit. You can even buy at day one, sell on day three, then buy on day three, and then sell on day five. So that would be two plus two, again, giving us four. Now, given that there are multiple ways to get the right answer, what approach do we wanna take? Well, in cases like these, we wanna take a greedy approach because greedy always stays ahead. And what I mean by this, right? If we were to buy on day one and sell on day five, we made a total profit of four. But if we make a profit at every single opportunity that was presented to us, if we try to be greedy and make profit whenever possible, we're guaranteed to be one of the optimal solutions. So if we were to buy at day one, and then we come across two, right? This is greater than the number we have, so we can sell to make a profit. We're gonna take it, we're gonna do that. So once we buy at day one, we sell at day two, and we get a profit of one. Then we can go ahead and buy again at two. Then the next number we see, say three, we sell. So at this point, up until three, we've already made a profit of two, and that's so far the most optimal solution. Because we can, of course, buy at one and then wait to sell at five. But up until this point, we would have made no profit doing so. However, if we are greedy with our approach, we are guaranteed to be one of the optimal solutions. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to buy at whatever price we see this first element. And then if we come across a number greater than us, we're going to sell and take that profit. However, if we come across a number smaller than us, we're going to change our buy price and instead buy at that lower price. So let's take a look at example one and see exactly what we're doing. So I have example one over here, right? I want to buy at day seven. So this is going to be my buy price. So right now my buy price is seven. Now I go to the next number as I iterate through my input array and I come across one. Now, one is smaller than the price that I bought on, so I can't make any profit, of course. But instead, what I can do is decide to buy at this price instead of the seven. So we no longer want to choose seven as our buy price, but instead choose one. So we want our buy price to be as small as possible. That way, our profit would be as big as possible. So instead of buying at seven, we're going to now try to buy at one. So now we're buying at one, and now we're going to come to the next number. Now, this next number is five. It's greater than the price we bought at. So we're going to sell and get the profit that we can. So that's going to be a profit of four. And we're going to take that. And if we hadn't updated our buy price from seven to one, we actually wouldn't be able to make a profit at this point. But we did, and now we can make a profit. So now that we were able to make a profit, we're going to set our new buy price to be five. So now we're buying at five. Now we're going to say we're going to try to buy at five. Now we come across our next number. This is three. It's smaller than our current buy price. So we're going to update. We're no longer going to say that we are buying at 
price five. We're now gonna try to buy at price three. So now we buy at price three and the next number we come across is greater than the number we are on. So we're taking that profit and we're adding to our total profit. So six minus three is three. Adding that to our current profit, we get seven. And if we hadn't updated that buy price, again, we only would have made a profit of one, six minus five. But now we can do six minus three, which is a profit of three. And then we choose to buy at six now. And we come across our new number four. It's smaller than ours. So instead of buying at six, we're now going to try to buy at four. And at this point, we reached the end of the array. So we can't really sell, which means we were only able to buy at one, sell at five, and then buy at three, sell at six for a total profit of seven. So that's exactly what we're going to do for this. We're going to set our buy price to be that first number in our array and our profit's going to be initialized to zero. Then we're going to iterate through every single number in our input array prices, except for this first one that we already set as our buy price. So for price in prices from one onwards, we're going to check if the number that we are on is greater than our current buy price, we're going to take that profit. So if price is greater than buy, we're going to add to profit price minus buy and once that's done we're gonna set that new price to be our buy price so buy is going to equal price so say we start off at seven right the next number we come across is one price is not greater than buy at this point so we still are going to update our buy to be this price that we're on to be one then once we come across five this is greater than the buy price we have of one well we're going to take that profit and still set this buy to be this price that we're on and we keep doing that all the way through collecting all the profits. And in the end, all we do is return profit. So let's go ahead and submit this and it is accepted. Now to talk about space and time complexity for this solution, for time, we're iterating through our entire input prices once it's a one pass solution. So this is gonna be O of N if the length of prices is N. And for space, we're only keeping track of a few variables. So this is going to be constant O of one for space. Now, before leaving, let's also run through a super quick example just to go back full circle and make sure we truly understand what we're doing. So going line by line, say our input prices is 44267. Let's see exactly what our code is doing. So the first thing we do is set our buy price. So our buy is going to be prices of zero, which is four, and our profit is going to be zero. Now we're going to be iterating through our input array prices from index one onward. So our first price in prices is going to be four over here. And we make a check. Is price greater than buy? It's not, so we can't make any profit right now. And we just change our buy to be this new price. Now, of course, this is the same number, so it doesn't really change, which means we're back in this for loop and our new price is now two. We make a check, is price greater than buy? It's not, so we don't go in this if condition and we update buy to be this new lower price. So it's gonna go from four to two. We go back in this for loop, we iterate through and price is greater than buy. So we're gonna add to profit price minus buy. So we're adding to profit six minus two, which is four. And we set buy to be this new price that we're on. So now we're going to be buying right after we sold because we're trying to be greedy, right? We're going to take the profit when we can, but still buy in case we do see a greater number. So now we go ahead and buy again at six and we're back in this for loop and we move price down. Again, price is greater than our buy. So we're going to add to profit this new profit that we're getting. So seven minus six is one. So our total profit is going to be five. And we set buy to be price seven and we are through with this for loop. So all we do now is return the profit of five. And we got this from buying at two, selling at six, which gave us four and then buying at six, selling at seven, which gave us another one. So four plus one was five. And we also could have just bought at two and sold directly at seven to get that profit of five. But we're using the greedy approach because we're guaranteed to get an optimal solution. So we just went ahead and solved the best time to buy and sell stock too. If you have any questions with this whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.